So I, I just, I threw in Rapids AI because I've been working with some of their uh, uh, packages uh, to make for one of my software. And to be honest, once you guys see Nano and I go through Nano, you'd be like, oh yeah, no. that's why KJ said, I didn't know people taught it. <laughs> but I, I, I add this doc so that you can have all the nice links just if you want to 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 know more about it. But like as, like I'm uh, as I as you're gonna see real quick that it's it's like intuitive really it's not like Vim it's not like Emacs you can literally open it up and you'll be fine. Uh, so we'll we'll do the Nano. Maybe it'll take five minutes. Maybe it'll take a little longer if you have asked questions. And then we're gonna really dive in more on Rapids, especially for like G uh, GPU and stuff like that. So. Nano is really, really simple. And it comes installed pretty much on any Linux and Unix. If you have a Mac, open up a terminal, do nano dash dash version, you probably got it. Um, and it's it's basic, but it still has everything you kind of need. So that includes like highlighting and stuff like that. Let me, I have a couple of, uh, Example script so you can see is Python automatic highlighting. And then the reason why I say this is intuitive because every time you open it, whether or not the file exists, at the bottom is everything you need to know how to exit Vim. <coughs> Think about you. Uh, if you want to write the file or if you make a change and you forget to write the file, it will just ask you, it's like, hey, but here's an example. We'll just say, this is a comment. Nice highlighting. I've you can hit the 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 right or you can just exit is like, hey, do you want to save your changes? And like, no, no, I don't want to. Um and then it has the same different syntaxes for markdown. It's got a lot of basic uh highlighting information already in. So even if you know nothing, you'll probably be fine. Um, so this is just kind of what I'm talking about. One thing I did not realize that I learned by looking at is that it will create a file for you if it doesn't exist. So if you just nano new file name, it, it'll, it'll create that file once you've saved it. And then as I was mentioning, syntax highlighting for pretty much all the popular ones. I, I didn't check R, but even if it isn't, I'm sure that there is a dot nano RC for R that seems like something that should exist. And it'll normally be in, in like shared or your your own personal. And if, if you do start it and for whatever reason the highlighting doesn't work, um it would and on Mac it really shouldn't be an issue. Uh, you can literally just add this file line here where the location of all those highlighting is to just a, a, a config in your local directory. Uh, so just two things that the carrot you guys saw at the bottom, that's the control key. And then there's an M, that's an alt key. And, and pretty much once you know all that, you're good to go. Uh, because again, the two bottom lines will have all the most common. I didn't realize there were even more uh, commands because than that, uh, and you can get a list by just doing control G, but I also had this uh, cheat sheet because apparently there's even more editing and searching and deletion and operation. So if, if you really wanted to go ham on this for your text editor, possible, very possible. Okay. Uh, so I I don't really basic basic. You can go up down on the keyboard. You can do some fancy stuff with like Control Plus and then move directly to the line. You could even start the the the, the file the your file at a specific line, which I did not know. Uh, just by doing adding that to the command. So 
you can get pretty fancy. And then it's not like them. You can just start text, start typing, and you will uh, start editing it. And then just remember to save. You can, and if you forget to save, it will prompt you. So copy, paste, it's a lot of the same stuff. K for cut, uh, U for paste, some other stuff for moving the 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 uh, 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 cursor around, but I mean, intuitive, intuitive. Uh, and then word search, which is always nice, uh, control W for text and then replace, not the same thing, backslash. Uh, I've been wondering how to cause search and replace. I normally just pop up Emacs, but now, now I know. Uh, and then that was just about customizing. Really, really, I mean, you can practice this if you if you want to just open and close. But even if you forget everything I say and then you open a file with Nano, I think you'll still be safe. Uh, so I think I think that's that's pretty much all. And then I got a handful of resources if you want to learn more. The official um, website, the manual, and then like frequently asked questions. Uh, but uh, unless anybody is like, like want yeah, you want like a couple minutes to play around on your own computer, which we can do, or, or we can we can talk about the uh, rapid. So I'm I'm open. Uh, to to the the wishes of the group. Yeah. Consensus. Look. We just needed to give Nano a try, right? Yeah. So, um we want to move to rapids, so that's okay. Okay, we, cause we can give it a try because it's like maybe it take you guys five minutes to open up a file, check to see if R has highlighting and enough on your on your Mac. Yeah, and I still have plenty of time to talk about rapids. Yeah. I like Nano. I use it in sometimes there's no Emacs available in some systems, and Nano is always there and it's easy to use. So, yeah. And I yeah. don't know the comments, but I can do like some basic edits, and it has a menu in the bottom. You can just get it done and quickly. Let's do yeah. some edits. Yeah, I use Nano a lot on the joint high performance cluster environment, uh, because like sometimes I don't want to start up a e Emacs. They they really need you to start up a commute node just to edit some scripts. So if like I don't want to do that, I pop right. up Nano, uh, starting it there. It's it's always available, especially it, Emacs. Maybe not so much. I, I don't ever check Vim. I'm sorry, having to figure out how to exit. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, Nano's pretty good. I didn't know the M was for the alternate or the alt key, so I've actually never used any of those commands. Because I use <laughs> Nano, but I can I just only use the control key commands. So that's good to know. So I realized the M was the alt key because in Emacs the M is also the alt key. Mm -hmm. um, so that that becomes the like. If you kind of know, so that's why some of the commands do work between, and I, I can't tell you with them, I, I have no idea, but some of them do work. And some of like the basic ones, the copy, paste, those things are kind of similar. But moving up a lot, not so much. Okay, so rapids. Now, I don't know how many people are familiar with Rapids. It's it's it, I stumbled upon it just because I was trying to figure out what was available for uh, like leveraging GPUs in Python. And what I found was like an entire ecosystem that had not been there two years ago. So if you're if you're not caught up, it's like this is this is like. Uh, is it is like a, it's not brand new, but it's almost brand new. It's and it's also still developing, so there are some bugs. But the stuff that they have now are very stable. It works really well, and I like the best thing about what Nvidia has done because Rapids is from is developed by Nvidia is they have modeled it off the stuff that already exists, so you do not have to learn new syntax, and and so. 
I, I'm looking forward to using this extensively. Oh, there. I'll talk. There's a lot here for the the uh, rapids. I'm going to talk about three of the components that I think are more relevant to what we kind of do in this like a data science space. But they have a lot uh, of utilities that are for like computer vision and all kinds of other uh, deep learning, machine learning uh, 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 architecture. Uh, but things that like we use like heavily, especially Python space, is QDF. And so that is usually Q Q CUDA data frame. And it is pretty much Pandas. And by pretty much, it's exactly modeled off of Pandas. Uh, so built with Arrow, so you know you have to have a couple of other steps in between if you want to uh, uh, move things around. But what I like even better is it's even faster than Polaris. And I, I don't know how many people are aware of this, but Polaris is pretty much a database like structure that is significantly faster than Pandas. And so I've been using Polaris a lot. And, and now that there's CUDA D, uh, DF, this is going to be the, the next best thing because this is significantly faster. They're, they're not lying. I, I was doing some benchmarking with massive amount of like genotype data and it's, it's fast. Uh, so best part, you don't really have to learn anything if you already know pandas and it's got and, and this is this is what i was talking about how there is a significant amount of uh rapids related stuff it's got an api which is decent the documentation is okay but because it's pretty much just pandas i think they have been a little relaxed on how to use it but so if you really do have questions and you get stuck on how to do like indexing and stuff, I was like, just go to the pandas and then trade out uh, CUDA pandas for CUDA DF. What I have been doing actually is I have been redefining if a GPU was present, the PD um, uh, shorthand for CUDA so that I don't have to change any of the code. Uh, so it, it, it does... It's um, uh, there's like one or two things that you might have to fix for like reading data frames in and out. Uh, if you are doing highly optimized code, if you're using the basic structure, you have to fix nothing. Uh, like if you don't need adding like a bunch of extra uh, fields and like when you're doing highly optimized, you normally need to put things like D types, uh, things like how, how you're going to instruct uh, to uh, handle header and infilling and compression. Not all of those are the same between Pandas and um, the QDF. But if you're just reading in a file and you're using a header, a separator, and the file name, maybe the columns and names and users and prefix, if you're using these bits, nothing needs to change uh, except for like uh, making sure you're using QDF versus Pandas. And that's I think that's the best part. So the second thing that I got really excited when I saw all about it is they have a QML. And this is Psychic Learn. And they've ported it specifically so that it works exactly like Psychic Learn. Uh, it, you can you so if you have your code already in Psychic Learn, all you have to do is switch out um, the library import to QML and it works exactly the same. And they are very, very intentional about making sure it worked that way so that it can be used by the community uh, who have already have all these scripts and stuff. So you just want to update everything for uh, being able to access GPU instead of the CPU that Psychic Learn. Nothing else really has to change. This documentation, a little bit better. Um, and by, I mean, a little bit of being kind, it is much better. Kind to the QDF is much better. Uh, they've got all kinds of information about the intentionalities, about how that you can use it. Like literally, if you've done the psychic clear and you're like, this is no different than if you had uh, 
this code right here is no different. Only difference is you've got the Q QML. Nice flexibility and so much faster. Uh, so, like, I mean, I don't, I, I mean, I want to get make sure everybody is aware of like this is available for you to be using, like instead of having to use the regular estimators that you would have in the scikit-learn environment. It's it's fantastic. I, I know, I'm getting a little excited, but I I was massively excited when I saw it. And so the documentation's much better, and they have a good number of uh, of uh, like, uh, uh, examples on the website. Although I'm going to get to later about how the, there are lots of notebooks too that is going to be even more help for using them. And then the last one I want to talk about is this graphic analytic library for large networks. I haven't really played around with it yet, but I thought that bring it to the attention of this group would be uh, a good idea, especially since you know some of these types of network network analysis. Uh, is going to be pretty uh, useful uh, for large scale genomics and incorporating multiple data uh, data types. So this one's got significantly more blogs, how to guides, uh, the basics. It looks like it's still under development, but at least it's got good understanding of network X, the different repositories that will take you straight to the notebooks. Uh, Jupyter Notebooks, where you can do dive in in more detail specifically on what you want to do. They don't have the light and they have the LUIF. Spectral clustering, all this thinks about what you can do with the single cell work and how you can utilize this to speed up stuff. Jacobian uh, similarities, all kinds of different uh, Jupyter Notebooks that show you how you can use it with some nice information and test information uh, and uh, uh, real results and how it looks. And obviously this is, you can't really see this because I've got it on the dark screen, but it, you get the idea that it's a good ecosystem. Yeah. So, I don't know, I guess I want to say it again going from the Jeep, that really is just, and it makes sense for NVIDIA since their whole thing is making these kinds of GPU, but they've now made libraries and uh, packages so that you can leverage their GPU. Of course, that makes they mean they can get more money, but it speeds stuff up. And the larger the data sets are, the more likely we need to be using more GPU versus CPU. And I, I cannot highlight enough, especially the QDF, and the QML, the it's in seamless integration. And I've tried it myself, like one line of couple lines of code, and it's almost interchangeable. And then obviously good open source community with community driven. Uh, so you can see how the code is. You just go to the website, see what they're doing. It's it's very intense code, uh, but it's interesting to see and, and uh, understand how they're leveraging uh, the NVIDIA's uh, GPU structure. Now, installing, uh, very easy to do on the joint uh, high performance cluster environment. I've done it, I've worked on it there. It's no problem with PIP. Uh, I haven't tried it with Docker uh, and I haven't tried it for Conda, uh, but for PIP, no problems at all on the high performance clustering environment. And we already have uh, compatible GPUs there. Uh, it's nice that it's, pretty easy integration with uh, Jupyter Notebooks. I've tried that too. And it, I haven't had any problem working with a Jupyter Notebook versus a, a, a script. Uh, then they've got nice detail that you can't just, you do have to do, it's like it, for any GPU, you have to do a little extra work for installing it, but it's not so bad. They've got like pick your stable, your environment, what the CUDA is, and then here's the line of code, pop that in, no problem. Um, I will say that um, the CUDA 12, if you have like a CUDA that's above that, it's you're going to have trouble. Uh, but so just just have that limitation in mind. Okay. 
And so, yeah, here are the, the hardware limitations I was mentioning. If you have the Python 12 that doesn't work yet, but probably in a couple of months or at least next year, you, they might have be able to work with Python 12. But for what's on the GPC, uh, the Joint High Performance Clustering Environment, perfect hardware, no hardware limitations, we're working good. And then here's just like an example of the code and th this is showing how, you know, it gives you the expected output if you were using Pandas versus using this kubedf is pretty simple. So there's a handful of things that I haven't mentioned uh, that I'll just give like a very quick briefing on. If you've done any work with Dask, Dask delay for large out of memory uh, analysis for like really big data, you can use GPU as a backend. And so they have it highly integrated with Dask as well. And then for things like Polaris, they are integrating it where you can use GPU there too. It's still a work in progress, but you can do things like collecting the data into memory with GPU instead of CPU. And I found that that has a, a increased, a decrease the, uh, the time it takes to impute into memory substantially. It was like, it went from like, I think 10 minutes to two minutes to compute the same data into memory using the GPU versus the CPU. Okay. So, and yeah, and I, there are other tools that I haven't mentioned because I just want to focus on those for now because I had, uh, yeah, here's the resources, but then we can actually test it. So I added the um, notebook here where you they have a series of community notebooks and it's it's quite extensive to help you um so they have the introduction notebooks they have more exploratory repositories great places to start introductory uh, additional resources and just looking at you know community tutorials but you they have stuff to help you with uh dask the Q graphic as well. What I think I found earlier was some of their other notebooks, which I put in here. Uh, which is their intro to Rapids. So we'll go to official doc. So if you wanted to find where I found these myself. So this, the whole web page where I was talking about, I highlight this QDF, these three here, but they have significantly more stuff too. Uh, and so user guides, and then they have community notebooks right here. So it's got nice documentation. And what I was looking at is the, so like, you can see they have a bunch more computer vision and Spark. And the community notebooks here is what I was looking at for intro. Uh, it's this. Getting started material. I don't know how I got here. I got here before. Found this intro conference notebooks data. Ah, here we go. Intro. Here we go. Intro guide tutorials and guides. And the first one I found was the just intro to to Rapids. But as you can see, they have one for QDF Dask Dask with QDF, which is what I was mentioning using as a backend supervised learning. Gradient boost, dimensional reduction, clustering, like all kinds of, of stuff that would be in, of interest. So uh, for when you want to just test it out, you don't want to do any installing, you can do it with the Google Colab. But all you have to do is change and make sure you're connected to a GPU node. So you go to runtime and then you just do change runtime type. 
And then normally it'll start at CPU. And then the free one is the T4. Uh, you you want to use something else, you got to pay for it. What? It's got nice here. It, you can run it, see how it looks. Um, doesn't normally take too long to run, even on a T4. Uh, and then just doing some nice basic loading. So here they're looking at uh, some, uh, you don't have this installed. Yeah, of course it's not installed. Well, I don't want to install that in my environment. Well, we'll add So any, any questions? I added the notebook so that people can try them uh, without having to log into like the down cluster. You can just try it on online. It's a little, it's, it'll be significantly slower because a lot of the, the GPU nodes on the joint high performance clusters are much better than this, that T4. Uh, but, you know, and it has significantly more like gigs of RAM. So, so this is just like looking at what's on, um, what you have to work with for the GPU architecture. I haven't seen anything less than 32 on the joint high performance uh, cluster. Pandas, and then they'll do some typing. It's like, okay, here's doing it with Pandas. You can do all this nice summing. And now if you want to, Switch from pandas to kudf, and once it installs, it's normally much faster. For something this small, it's almost going to be impossible to see the speed difference. But the fact of the matter is that you can literally do the exact same uh, analyses here and here, same block of code. The only difference is they've changed out here. And then they have a nice little tutorial for like, oh, let's just try Sidekick Learn. Uh, and this is just uh, generating data to, to try it out in here, visualizing it. And now applying a linear regression model with Sidekick Learning. And then here we go where they actually test it. Uh, 5.62 milliseconds, not too bad. Prediction and then plotting that line, which is going to be very close. This looks like a nice trend. And now here they do the same thing uh, using a QDF. So the only difference is you're probably going to want to have your data frame in a a GPU readily available data frame. So small difference, but shouldn't be too big of a deal. You should have this installed. That would there you go. Benchmark this for yourself, they say. Where did I go to the instance? Try to install this in the notebook. PDF is already there, and I just want this one. So I don't know how long it's going to take to install. Probably not that that long. Is there think of like questions or things you want to try out? Uh, no, it's excitement. Like oh no, it's so cool. 
Yeah. yeah, I wanted to mention that I actually tried to install with Conda uh, and it works very well actually on, on local, if you have a GPU that's relatively new, like a 3060 I had and a 4070 and it worked uh, pretty well Yeah, to install with Conda with the right version of Python and that's the advantage of using Conda, uh, right? You can just specify the Python version and everything, and the CUDA version was 12. So yeah, it it works uh, very well. That's how we're gonna probably do it on JHPC, right? Yes. Yeah. I was curious how well it worked on Conda. Um, I, I will mention that my current setup has like a Python version of 12. Uh, which is how I found out that it didn't work <laughs> install. So I was the next best thing I think I'll I'll, I'll do a Conda install, but I, I don't want to play around with Conda until I do ahead of time. There was one other thing that um Bernie mentioned in in the chat that I had not known, which is probably of more interest to the R class, is that there is a uh, interface for the ML one at the very least for R. So I've added the documentation. I haven't haven't tried it out, but I mean, if it can use a, a GPU and it pretty much uses the psychic learn stuff, this would be a great um, utility for our R users uh, to incorporate using the QML. Uh, at the very least. And if they've ported this, the likelihood they port the other things, I, I don't know how, I don't know if there's an alternative to like date pan, because normally just regular R is pandas. Uh, but at the very least, the ML version is available, setting it in an engine and, and applying it. So I, I wanted everybody to realize that this is available. I, I added in the doc and the link so that people could use it. Uh, and then it's got a nice information on how they installed this, although you're not going to be able to do that on it. But like making sure the CUDA is available, all of this should normally be done uh, by the admins. But they're also using a, a, a Conda environment. So I think it's probably a good idea to use con environment if you're going to do this with R uh, and, and try it out yourself with some of this uh, kind of information here. Of course. Restarted the session, so let's. We'll start from the top since it restarted. Okay, don't need that, don't need that. Okay. And now let's try this again. And the speed this time, one second of wall clock. How long was it before? It's taken longer for, for the differences here.
But other than that, it doesn't look like there's any differences really in in the syntax of how you would uh, initiate it. And it's pretty much a, a direct overlap of the relationship. So I think uh, unless people, to be honest, that's probably like the nice bits of it. Going into Dask is really a bit extra, but uh, what I really want to do is highlight what is available, get people thinking about how they can utilize GPU in their their work uh, and upgrading code to to utilize your GPU and speed things up, especially for these large scale analyses. So with that, I'm probably just going to stop sharing.